Guns N' Roses would rule the world from 1988 to 1993, releasing several huge albums including Appetite for Destruction and the User Illusion records. Following the User Illusion tour in July of 1993, the band struggled to write new material. The band managed to cobble together a covers album that was put out in November of 1993 titled The Spaghetti Incident, and the following year they released a cover of the Rolling Stones song Sympathy for the Devil for the film Interview with the Vampire. By 1995, Slash would release an album from his side project Slash Snake Pit, signaling the end of his working relationship with frontman Axl Rose for nearly two decades. He would leave the band the following year and would be followed by bassist Duff McKagan and drummer Matt Sorum the following year. By 1998, Rose would be the last man standing from the 80s lineup of the band, and he had to assemble a new group, and while a lot of people came and went over the next 20 years, one of the more interesting members to join the band was guitarist Buckethead. But how did guitarist Slash feel about Buckethead replacing him? And what did he have to say in the press? That's what we're going to discuss in today's video. It was frequently reported in the press in the early to mid-90s that frontman Axl Rose was not just a fan of hard rock music, but more alternative bands including Jane's Addiction, Pearl Jam, and Nine Inch Nails. When Guns N' Roses began working on their proper follow-up to 1991's User Illusion, it was reported that Rose wanted the band's music to grow and evolve, while guitarist Slash wanted to stay closer to the band's hard rock sound. Perhaps Rose gave us a sneak peek of where his mind was when he put out the head-scratching tune in My World on User Illusion 2. In 1995, Slash, who was still in Guns N' Roses at the time, was doing press for his project Snake Pit, and he revealed where Axel's mind was at at the time musically, sank to Metal Hammer. There was a point where Axel goes, I'm going to do a solo record, and I'm going to get Trent Reznor and Dave Navarro and Dave Grohl, the drummer from Nirvana, and so on. And it's like, he doesn't even know half of these people. He's just pulling them out of the sky. In a separate interview with Canadian Radio, Slash would state the same year, then Axel decided his solo project he could do with guns, which I was like, after doing all those videos and this and that and the other, I was like, no, no, I don't want to be involved in any kind of Stephanie Seymour ballads or any of that shit. As Axel assembled his new lineup of Guns N' Roses in the mid to late 90s, he would bring in Nine Inch Nails guitarist Robin Fink, who played with the band in 1998 and 1999, but he would depart the group just before the millennium, leaving the band without a guitarist. As for how Buckethead joined the band, Rose wasn't sure how to get a hold of the guitarist, but Guns N' Roses drummer at the time Josh Freese knew Buckethead and helped Rose track him down. Freese would reveal in an interview that he had heard that Buckethead was up in San Francisco at the time hanging out with the band Primus, so Freese would place a call to Primus' manager Dave Lefkowitz, recalling the conversation he had, saying, the first thing I said was like, do you think Bucket would be into this? He's such a quirky, weird artist. And Dave goes, yeah, I think he's tired of the starving artist routine. I think he's ready to make a living. Things wouldn't be solidified until Buckethead was invited to Rose's home for Christmas in 1999. It had been a tough holiday season for Bucket, who was in the market for a Leatherface doll but was unable to find one. Rose had managed to track one down and gave it to the guitarist, and he soon joined the band afterwards. Buckethead, for his part, would drift in and out of Guns N' Roses for the next several years until finally leaving in 2003. Most people in North America wouldn't first see the new incarnation of Guns N' Roses publicly until the 2002 MTV Video Music Awards, where Rose's new band closed the show. Performing with the band was Buckethead, and the reviews were not good, largely due to Rose's poor vocal performance and his changing physical appearance. When Slash's new band Velvet Revolver, which also featured drummer Matt Sorum and bassist Tuff McKagan, appeared on Howard Stern's radio show in 2004 to promote their debut record Contraband, they were asked about Guns N' Roses' appearance at the Video Music Awards, and here's what they had to say. Hey, I got a question for the guys from Guns N' Roses. When you guys saw Axel on the MTV Awards a couple years ago with that band and that Buckethead thing, were you guys like embarrassed for it? I didn't see it. You've never seen it? I refuse I, to I see it. like a year later. Why do you refuse to see it? I I was I was going to school at the time so and having kids and I just didn't see it. What kind of school? Going to school. Oh, yeah, I was I went to a nice Jesuit school. Jesuit. Yeah. What high school? No. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's what kind they... of school? What were you studying? Thanks, Robin. What were you trying to learn? Um, finance. Oh really? Yeah. You were gonna be but... a businessman? <laughs> <laughs> I am a businessman. I'd like wow. to go over my portfolio with Duff. <laughs> <laughs> so I saw it a year later. Slash, why do you refuse to see it? 
Um, I was, I, you know, it was one of those things where I got a bunch of phone calls one morning and uh, leaving me messages going, you know, you, uh, what was that whole thing about on TV? And and I didn't know what anybody was, you know, what it was. Yeah, what is that? And so I, I, well, so I called. Why couldn't he be with you guys? I don't understand. Well, I'd been gone for a while. Duff had been gone for a while. Man had been right. gone for a while. It was over with. When, right. I, when it finally ended, it was like you no know, turning back kind of thing. And so when when I heard what it was, it was the MTV Awards, and I heard the reaction from the people that saw it. I didn't want to see something. I didn't want to leave, you know, have that that memory of of whatever Guns N' Roses was. When I left, it was still sort of cool. Yeah. You know right. I mean? Right. I yeah. I think to, it's over for that. Right, our, our memories are pretty good. Of the, it was a great the band, yeah. great band. Buckethead would eventually leave the band in 2003, and according to MTV News at the time, they would report, and I quote: at "The end of 2003, Buckethead became fed up with Guns's inability to complete an album or tour, and stopped working with them." His manager said. Perhaps my favorite quote about Buckethead's time in the band came from his friend and former Guns N' Roses drummer Brain, who told the I'd hit that podcast in 2015. In Guns, the greatest thing was. He would talk through his hand puppet Herbie and wear out the managers. There's a million dollars on the line and they're talking to an effing puppet, he'd say. Guns N' Roses at the time were trying to put out their long-awaited album Chinese Democracy. And in 2004, they were planning on making at least one public appearance at the Rock and Rio Festival in Portugal. But the date would be scrapped after Buckethead left the group. With frontman Axl Rose putting out a statement that read, During his tenure with the band, Buckethead has been creating uncertainty and confusion and making it virtually impossible to move forward with recording, rehearsals, and live plans with confidence. In the same year, Slash, while out on the road promoting Velvet Revolver's first record on Halloween, would dress up as Buckethead, as you can see in this photo. Three years would go by, and in 2007, Slash appeared on Howard Stern's Sirius XM radio show to promote his autobiography, and he was asked about his thoughts on Buckethead, and here's what he had to say. It's weird, because th th there was one time I went to see Guns N' Roses, and of course you're looking for the guitar player to be Slash, and it could have just been sort of, you know, nondescript, and instead it was that weird guy Buckethead. Do you remember? Uh, that there, was on the MTV yeah, show. it was a guy with a bucket over his head, and it was almost like calling <laughs> oh too much attention. I, know, I was I was, I was him for Halloween a couple of years ago. <laughs> were you? You were Buckethead? Yeah, but let, <laughs> let me just put one thing in. Um, well, I, do you think I, Buckethead is a talented individual? You know, I've never, I don't really know his work. I, I really don't know his work. Okay. I know, I've heard he's a really uh, accomplished guitar player. Okay. Very technically, you know, fluent. You say that um, uh, as a uh, put down in a way. that uh, A guitar player well, has not a, He's not a rock guy, you know. A rock guy has a certain soul to his guitar. Yeah, exactly. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. It's not just he all about technical. I have, I have heard a couple pieces of music from Buckethead, and it, it's technically proficient, but doesn't have any heart, you know. So, in other words, you kind of say, hey, there's two types of musicians. There's mm -hmm. the guy who can go in and read charts and get that all done, mm -hmm. and then there's you. You can walk into a studio and and make something magical happen. Something like that, you know. Okay. It's like if you if you're gonna if you if somebody picks up the guitar and has the balls to, the balls to really come from the heart and and expose himself, you know, emotionally on the instrument, you can tell, you can feel it. Getting back to the sex. But one year later, in 2008, Megadeth frontman Dave Mustaine would talk to LA Weekly and discuss Buckethead and Slash, saying, "When I think about a guy with a hat, I think of Slash." And I think Slash is an excellent guitar player. He's one of my favorites. That's a guy that's pulled it off. He's brilliant. I love him. But when you see some guy like Buckethead, Buckethead is probably twice as good of a guitar player as me and Slash combined and can stand having fried chicken rubbed against his face all night for a couple hours. Slash would end up being interviewed by LA Weekly the same year and responded to Mustaine's praise of him and Buckethead saying, well, that is actually true. Anybody who knows me knows that technically I couldn't play my way out of a paper bag or a Kentucky Fried Chicken Bucket for that matter. I managed to do what it is I do based on a certain kind of feel and sound. I'm getting better at it, but I've never been what you call a technical guitar player, so he's totally right. The long-awaited Chinese Democracy album from Guns N' Roses would finally be released in November of 2008. Buckethead would be credited with playing on all the tracks, with the exception of two of them, including Catcher in the Rye and This I Love, and coming up with arrangements for three of the songs. Slash would be interviewed by Music Radar and gave his thoughts on the album, saying, I already listened to it, so I listened to it. It's a really good record. It's very different from what the original Guns N' Roses sounded like, but it's a great statement by Axel. Now you understand where he was heading all this time. It's a, it's a record that the original Guns N' Roses could never possibly make. And at the same time, it just shows you how brilliant Axel is. So it was a relief for me to actually hear it. In 2016, Slash would rejoin Guns N' Roses and tour with the band extensively. As part of the tour, the band would play a handful of Chinese democracy songs as part of their set. Rose would admit in an interview that it was Slash and Duff's idea to play songs from Chinese democracy, not his. 
Slash would praise Buckethead in a 2018 interview, revealing to Eddie, I know everybody trunk, and I quote, it was cool. There's some great songs on that record, so I just sort of adapted my own way of playing them and just made them more my own, so I feel more comfortable. And they just kick ass. The same year he would talk to Guitar World, adding, that said, I also want to give credit where credit's due. The guitar players that played on Chinese Democracy, Buckethead being one of the main ones, were effing amazing guitar players. I have to give those guys a shout out because that stuff was cool. Very different from what I normally do. So it's been interesting learning some of the stuff that was on that record. I definitely had to figure out ways to adapt to it, he'd say. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like button and subscribe. We'll see you again in Rock and Ultra Stories sticker.